Behind me is the cabin where for the next 50 hours I will lock myself up and do absolutely nothing. There's only one rule. The only thing I'm allowed to consume is water. So at first I thought this was going to be easy, because after a two hour drive into the woods, as soon as I arrived at the cabin, I already had something waiting for me. The owner of the cabin left me a personal note with some important instructions. Dear Stefan, welcome to our lovely little cabin where you will find all the peace and quiet you need far far away from the real world. To make your stay more comfortable, there's a couple of things you should know. He wrote down how to light up the fireplace how to use the kitchen just outside the cabin, and to be careful about the slippery porch in front. He also wrote this, I hope you enjoy your stay, and P.S. You are a really handsome, strong, and smart guy, Stefan. I love you. Okay, that didn't happen, but what did really happen was I got interrupted by a fly. My next thing to do. So I guess the first mission is to get this fly. So the first couple of hours were still pretty easy. I explored the cabin, unpacked my stuff, and I lit the fireplace. This actually reminds me of the of this Breaking Bad episode where in the whole episode they're just chasing fly in one big room. Kind of feels like the same thing right now, except I'm not look, cooking meth. I'm not cooking at all. Can't find a fucker. And I can hear you think, what's so difficult about sitting in a cabin and not doing anything? And I don't blame you for asking, but let me repeat the only rule there is. For 50 hours, I am only allowed to consume water, nothing else. So that means no food for 50 hours. And now even the hunger is starting to become an issue. It also means no phone, no laptop, just completely offline. But it also means no music to listen to, no books to read, I just not allowed to consume anything else but water. But if I somehow manage to not go insane and pass the 50 hours without breaking the rule, I will consume something that will quite literally blow my mind. You'll see. But first, I have to survive with just drinking water for the next 50 hours in this cabin all by myself. The fuck? How is that even possible? So I just killed the fly, like 100% sure that I killed the fly. I saw it fall down and now it disappeared. What the fuck? What is happening? Am I already losing my mind four or five hours in? That's the most interesting thing that's happening right now in my life. What the fuck, man? And to help me survive, I brought only four things. A pen, a notebook, an emergency phone, because I don't want to sit here in a cabin thinking that something might happen to my fiance or my parents and they not being able to contact me if something happens. Kupio sam ovo. Da no ki staro za 10 € sam kupio. Da ću vam broj. So, I have an emergency phone. They're the only ones that have this phone number. But more importantly, I might need to use this phone after I pass the 50 hours and I consume the thing that's going to blow my mind. I want to be able to reach out to the outside world in case shit hits the fan. And the last thing is a skill because I want to weigh myself. I want to know how much weight I'll lose by not eating any food for 50 hours. So let's weigh myself. So I wrote down not just my weight. 83.0. But I also rated my hunger. Not that bad. 6.5. Out of 10. My mood. Feeling pretty good. 8.5 out of 10. Sharpness. 9 out of 10. Energy. 9 out of 10. All right. So I could compare once the 50 hours of doing nothing. Now what? Are over. Slowly noticing that my brain is working a little bit slower. Still haven't caught the fly. Since writing is basically the only thing I'm allowed to do, I expected I would write a lot. I'm getting a bit tired. I'm just gonna chill out for a bit. I don't feel like writing anymore. Oh. I noticed that I 
tend to reach for my phone a lot, but there is no phone. I left it in the car. So when I just came to this place, it started raining a little bit. I want to grab my phone to look up if it's going to keep raining today, but there is no phone. The urge for the phone is big. Feeling a little bit tired, a little bit slow. So I'll just go with the flow. I'll do it literally whatever the fuck I want to do. So I started getting tired. So I just laid down in bed and I literally did nothing for like 20 minutes. I just stared at the ceiling, letting my thoughts run. I think it, the tiredness comes from the fact that I haven't eaten in about 24 hours right now. Because even though I'm just five, six hours in, that's not the moment that I stopped eating. The moment I stopped eating was yesterday evening. So I've been in a fasted state for 24 hours already, uh, not just like five, six. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Gonna hit the bed. Feeling pretty tired. Wanted to do some writing, but just really tired. So I'll show you a bit of the cabin tomorrow. But for now, good night. So stupid. Now I have to pretend like I'm going upstairs, but I actually have to turn off the camera. Cheers. I actually slept really good. Not sure what time I uh, went to bed. Must have been around 8 or 9. So I slept almost maybe like 11, 12 hours. And it gave me a lot of energy I'm feeling. Fit, I'm ready to crush today. I'm ready to drink water and write things. Yeah. First thing I noticed when I uh, had the urge to go to the toilet to take a shit is where's my phone? Bring my phone. I usually play chess on my phone and sit for fucking 10 minutes on the toilet without taking a shit. And that's when the first real energy dips hit me. After nearly two days without food, I started experiencing energy dips, leaving me only able to sit, stare and think, sometimes even too drained to speak or record anything at all. Little did I know, it was going to get a lot worse. It's funny how fasting, like you can really feel the ups and downs of your energy levels. And actually my energy dip was pretty intense just like 10 minutes ago but now that i'm recording it's all right but anyways i'm gonna put some salt in my water so besides the water i'm also going to consume some salt now but it's supposed to help uh, with the electrolytes and whatever uh, you're still fasting you're still not getting any calories in but the salt just uh, hydrates you better i guess i'm not a fucking scientist ask andrew huberman i don't know what the fuck. cheers What the fuck am I doing to myself? You know, fasting is, in itself is already a challenge, uh, especially if you do it like multiple days, you go into ketosis, you're asking a lot from your body. It's really healthy for you and I advise everyone to do it, consult with your doctor, blah, blah, blah. But like look into the benefits of fasting for multiple days. The thing when you fast is you wanna be, keep yourself busy because if you're bored, you're gonna think about food. What do I do? I lock myself up in a cabin with absolutely nothing to do but to think about how hungry I am. Yeah, so I was writing a bit, then I noticed something. I can hear my heart beat through this lamp. Listen closely. Now when I don't touch the table, nothing. Things you notice when things slow down. So I guess I owe you an explanation of why I decided to lock myself up in a cabin for three days. So let me explain while I walk over to this bench I found uh, overlooking a nice view so I can act all philosophical and stoic uh, while I explain why I decided to lock myself up in this cabin. So the main reason is it all started when I watched uh, this documentary about Bill Gates where he talks about this thing he does every year called Think Week. Basically, he locks himself up in a cabin and he brings a bunch of books and just sits there for a week in this cabin just to process things, think through stuff in his life, 
brainstorm on ideas. So that was the inception of the idea because it sounded like uh, that's something I wanted to do. Uh, just have a moment with my thoughts alone for a couple of days. And then I realized, you know what? Let's make a YouTube video about it. Just bring my camera talking about this Think Week. But then I saw this YouTuber called Nathaniel Drew do basically the same thing as Bill Gates. He was also inspired by Bill to just rent a cabin somewhere in a snowy area. And it was a really cool video. But then I thought, you know what? Let's one up. Nathaniel and Bill Gates by also doing a fast at the same time. I don't want to go into the specifics of why I'm doing that, but it can prevent certain types of cancers. It can be good for your cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Parkinson's. Consult with your doctor first. It's not medical advice. You know the drill. But then I thought, you know what? Let's take it even a step further. Why not, instead of just not consuming any food, well, why not just not consume anything except for water, obviously. Otherwise, I would die which is not really cool. I'm only allowed to create, to output myself. So the only input is water and the only output is writing shit down and making the video, obviously. So those are kind of the reasons why I'm doing this, why I'm torturing myself. But there's actually a more important reason, which is last year I've traveled the world with my girlfriend. We've literally been around the world. And we've done so many cool things and this great adventure. It's probably the best year of my life. It is the best year of my life. But I would call this like a big outward journey, outward facing journey. I have no idea what I'm talking about. That's the philosopher in me. But I guess what I want to say is, but I've never done a thing like this where you're going in an inward journey. There's no one to talk to. There's nothing to distract yourself. It's just you and your thoughts. And why not take it to the extreme? So at the end of these 50 hours, if I manage to actually not break the rule, I'm gonna intensify this inward journey by a million times. Trust me. And it'll make sense. If I make it, it'll make sense. I see people walking there. I forgot how people look like. When I have those energy dips, the best way to describe how that feels would be Something like that. Oh, by the way, another reason I forgot to mention. You see, every year I do this thing called Sober October, which I literally copied from Joe Rogan. We do this thing every year called Sober October. Which basically means like no drugs and no alcohol for the month of October. But since I don't do that that often anyway, it wouldn't be too much of a challenge. I also included uh, no coffee, no caffeine basically. And I fucking love coffee, trust me. So for this month of October, I haven't done any alcohol, any drugs, or drank any coffee. But these three days in the cabin are literally the last three days of October. So it's a nice kind of a climax of no alcohol, no drugs, no coffee. And then at the end, it's like also no food, no phone, no books, no music, no distractions, no nothing. And then in two days, when this is all over, I can make myself a nice, fresh cup of coffee. All right. So I promise you to show you the cabin. So. We got a nice little coffee and tea corner over here with some tissues for you know what, when it gets really lonely. A nice writing table with a cozy corner over here. And then we have another cozy corner over here, which is my favorite place. Chair over here, which I sit a lot or I sit lie down in the corner over here. And then we got the fire stove, which I just realized I might need to add some wood over here. Let me just do that. There we go. It keeps us nice and warm. So, toilet, and shower. Shower is really cold, by the way. It's fucking freezing. I had a cold shower this morning. It was freezing. And then we got a nice little fridge and some pans and pots and cutlery and shit, which I won't need because I won't cook. And we go upstairs, which is basically the bedroom. Nice cozy, sleeps really good. And that's basically it. I mean, it's a very small and cozy uh, little cottage, but it has everything you need, especially for a weekend of not doing anything. It has more than you need. I'm gonna put on the fireplace outside, that one. It's actually getting really dark really soon. I think it's like 4 p.m. right now. Let me check what time it is. It's 4.20. Hey, 420. Nice. Let's close the door for the mosquitoes. 
because I left the light online. Uh, online. See? See how my mind is thinking? Wi-Fi ad addict. Could eat a nice pepperoni pizza right now. Mm -mm -mm. Feels good to not be able to know what's going on in the world right now. I have no idea what the Bitcoin price is. I have no idea what the weather is going to be like tomorrow. I have no idea what my girlfriend is doing. And I have no idea what 17 side hustle tips I've missed. Yay, fire is picking up. Then make fire. Now I feel like riding. It's time for dinner. Mmm, yummy, my favorite. But honestly, it does help if I have a big energy dip and if I drink a glass of water with a little bit of salt, it seems to uh, bring the energy back. Electrolyze and shit, man. Huberman reached out to me for podcast. So it was just outside and I thought, eh, I'm bored, let's go inside. And I'm literally inside for three minutes and I'm bored already. I don't know what to do. After two days without food, I could feel my body and brain struggling. It kind of feels like you're dying in slow motion. It's a cold and rainy morning. My head feels heavy. Energy's pretty low. Yesterday I went to bed at like 8.30 already. I didn't know what to do anymore. And I just wanted to uh, sleep so that the day was over as fast as possible. But hey, it's the day. It's the day I break my fast. I have about eight hours to go before I've completed the 50 hours of this extreme dopamine detox. What the fuck, man? <sighs> yeah, I feel really, uh, the energy is really low. When walking, my legs are shaking a little bit. The rain isn't too bad. It's clearing up, actually. So I might actually go for a quick walk outside to wake up a little bit and then we're almost finished. The being alone, easy. The no phone, no laptop, easy. The no books, no music, it would be cool to have some music or read some books. But it's the no food that gets me, man. So I've been in a fasted state. I haven't had food in, let me calculate, since Saturday evening. One, two three days so 72 hours oh no wait it's morning damn my mind is not working at all i literally cannot think straight what is it eight two two eight yeah 60 hours the things i miss the most my fiance obviously i have to say that because otherwise she will get angry at me watching this video um coffee food and now even the hunger is starting to become an issue and my friends and that's about it we're gonna go for a quick walk oh man my legs It's such a magical place. Beautiful fucking forest. And I don't know, man, I, I just love the autumn vibes. The colors, the orange hues, the mushrooms popping up everywhere, insects crawling around, the rain. Oh man, the sun is coming through. The whole evening it was raining and now the sun is blasting through the clouds. I want to show you a uh, secret little spot I found yesterday while doing a morning walk. It's been enough. Like, I'm already starting to get the feeling like, okay, what the fuck am I doing? I want to be out and doing shit again. I do honestly think if you can't sit alone with yourself and your thoughts, then you should sit alone with your thoughts to figure out why. Because everybody should be comfortable in their own skin and should be comfortable to be by themselves. And then by choice, surrounding yourself with good people. Yeah, energy is low, body feels very heavy. <laughs> when I'm walking, my legs are trembling a little bit. So I'm gonna head back to the cabin and then we're almost finished. Hell yeah, cheers. Now I'm pretending like I'm walking away, but I actually have to go back to get the camera. Life of a YouTuber. We got 28 minutes left before I can start cooking up a nice chicken bone broth to break our fast. A nice cup of tea. Oh yeah, a cup of tea. And I brought with me these chocolate pepper nuts. It's a Dutch thing, but man. And then I'm gonna put on some music. 
and I'm slowly going to prepare for consuming the mind-blowing thing I was talking about. On the one hand, time really flew by. But on the other hand, I had so much time to think about my life. I thought about a lot of stuff. I thought about why I'm actually doing this. I was thinking about my friends, about the fact that most people are currently working their nine to five job, sitting at the office or at home behind their desk. I think back of my journey, like how I worked as a data analyst for so many years, then decided to become a freelancer, did that for a couple of years, and then quit that job, started traveling the world, went all in on YouTube, starting my creative business. Now look at me now. Lonely in a cabin with no food. <laughs> if you want to become a freelancer and use freelancing as a stepping stone to freedom, you might want to click on the link in the description where I explain exactly how I did it and how you can too. Five, four, three, two, one, 50 hours. Let's go. By the way, before I start eating again, I'm going to do a check-in again on how much weight I've lost. So let's step on the scale. 83.3 so i gained i gained weight no but that's probably that's probably because i'm holding the camera let me check how much it is without the camera it's 81.9 lost a kilogram just over a kilogram not that bad actually mood 10 out of 10 i'm excited because it's over energy actually really good i haven't eaten yet but the energy is still good just the fact that i'm about to eat already gives me the energy like i've eaten sharpness 10 out of 10 hunger 8 out of 10 i'm not even that hungry it's just have, i have an empty stomach but i'm not that hungry oh man excited i'm gonna cook the chicken broth right now But even though I just finished my extreme dopamine detox, the hardest part of this experiment was yet to come. Oh, man. As I promised, I'm about to consume something that will blow my mind. Magic truffles. The cousin of magic mushrooms. They both contain psilocybin, a psychoactive substance that can alter the perception of reality. And yes, you can just order them to your home. So the, the mystical experience produced by psilocybin is rated by people as the most profound, among the most profound experience of their life, as life-changing. It produces permanent personality transformations. It has been one of the most important things I've done in my life for a multitude of reasons, but they don't come with risks. What we don't understand about psychedelics is a very thick book. They bend the structure of reality. And then the unexpected happened. Look the hell out. For three days, I was so excited to embark on this psychedelic experience all by myself in this cabin. But as I was talking about the risks of taking psychedelics, I started panicking. There's about a 10% chance, by the way, with psilocybin ingestion of a trip to hell. My heart started racing. I'm completely isolated. There's nobody around to help me if something bad happens. If I fall into a dark place, there's nobody to pull me out. Fuck it. It's time. Wish me luck. These things are gross right away. Mm. Ah, lift off. So I'm going to put on the fire outside and then just uh, wait for it to kick in. I'm nervous as fuck, man. My heartbeat is going really fast. Ah, oh, man, I'm nervous as fuck. I'm really anxious. Can you hear my breathing? <sighs> oh, man. The fucking aftertaste of those truffles is awful, man. nervous oh the wind is starting to pick up 
telling me it's going to be all right. Oh, what the fuck? I'm already starting to trip balls. Jesus Christ, I thought someone was already sitting here. Jesus Christ, I thought I saw someone. I'm already tripping balls, sex. Starting to see all these patterns in the, in the grass. Can't stop shaking my leg because of the nervousness. If I look at something for a little bit too long, it fucking starts warping me inside. I don't know how to explain. But as I slowly started letting go of the steering wheel, I started feeling at ease. Wow. Fucking amazing, bro. I was talking about letting go and enjoying the journey. Well, fucking enjoying the journey right now. Jesus Christ. I'm tripping balls. Forget about it. As it got darker and colder outside, I had to get back to the cabin. And what followed then, I can only describe with one word. Now this part of the trip was the most confusing and chaotic. The fireplace had died out, so it was freezing inside the cabin. So I quickly decided to have a warm shower instead, because I started shivering from the cold. But in the shower, I was confronted with so much shit in my head. Here you are, using psychedelics while everyone else is working a job, being responsible human beings. But look at you, you're selfish. Who the fuck isolates themselves in a cabin for three days? What a stupid idea. Who cares about you, your stupid cabin, and your YouTube channel? Who cares about what you have to say? I had to get out of the shower. But as soon as I did, the trip turned 180 degrees. The fire magically lit up again. Jazz was playing in the background. Woozing through the jazz as I'm woozing through my thoughts. And I became calm and happy. Welcome to my crib. <laughs> I'm seriously having a blast all by myself. I got some ni nice jazz playing, but I'm afraid it might get me into some copyright issues. So just put it on pause while I'm explaining to you how the vibes are. They are immaculate. Damn, I was tripping ball sex. I think I've repeated that multiple times. Yesterday and this morning, I just had no energy. I would just literally sit around and stare at shit and think about stuff. That's all I could do. But now, look at me now. Sorry for the bottom that we here. But this apple is so fucking delicious, man. Oh my God. I fixed the jazz issue, by the way. I fixed the fucking jazz. I felt like Albert Einstein for coming up with the solution. As you might notice, I'm tripping balls. I also felt like I was the greatest philosopher in the world and had the urge to share my thoughts and lessons with you. Yeah, I wanted to take this moment to uh, tell how much I appreciate Irene for putting up with such a strange guy as I am to lock himself up for 50 hours in a cabin. <laughs> I fucking love you. Wow, I'm back to life, man. I'm full with energy again. I'm ready to... I've missed music. Fucking music is so fucking beautiful. Oh, it's raining outside. I grew to love this cabin, man. This cabin is fucking awesome. And there were five big lessons I learned in that cabin that night. First of all, whether I was a narcissist for being a YouTuber. You have to be a little bit narcissistic to start a fucking YouTube channel. But I guess it's not about me. It's about the ideas I'm trying to share with the world. And it's a creative outlet. And I'm just putting it out there and anybody can watch it, whoever feels like watching it. You don't have to do anything. Is that a narcissistic thing to do? I don't know. Then I realized this would have been way harder without the camera. I do sound like a lunatic, I just realized. I'm sitting alone in a cabin in the woods, talking to myself. But I actually have you. I think doing this whole thing without you would have been way harder. I realized how much I love coffee. Oh man, and I'm gonna have coffee again tomorrow. Coffee for the first time in a month. Jesus Christ, I missed coffee, oh my God. I decided I want to start a second YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm thinking about starting a second channel called The Stefanovic Show. Not sure about the name though. Narcissistic thing, you know what I talked about? Because trust me, I have a lot to share and a lot more to share that doesn't fit the main channel. So if you're interested in following me personally, then follow me there. 
whether I was an introvert or an extrovert. Am I an introvert or an extrovert? I'm both. Like sometimes I can lock myself up in this little bubble. Work, 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 work. Gym, 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 gym. I like that bubble. But then when I step out of that bubble, I actually do crave those social interactions. Everything I do with good friends and good company, I fucking love doing that, no matter the environment or surroundings. I think I'm done speaking, but then like not even one minute passes and I already have the urge to talk to you again. That's how much I fucking crave social connection. I can't wait to get back to the real world. And why I didn't write as much as I think I would. I'm not a good writer, but I think I have a pretty solid way of articulating my thoughts. At least now while I'm tripping balls, it feels so clear and sharp in my mind that I'm able to tell exactly what I want to tell the way I want to tell it. And that's why I needed this fucking reset to clear my mind of all the distractions and resistance and clutter in my mind. And now it's all... This is exactly why I did all of this. Like, I wanted to kind of deprive myself of everything, like go into a little shell. And then at the end of it, explode with rejuvenated energy, creativeness, mojo, whatever you want to call it. And I got exactly what I came for. I'm gonna treat myself with some instant noodles. You know how Andrew Tate always uh, says, what color is you, your Bugatti? I cannot fucking uh, reenact Andrew Tate. Hey Andrew, what hair color is your day one wifey with the body count less than three? Huh? Think about that. Why I thought of that, I have no idea. Probably because I was thinking about Irene. She's actually a day one. She's been with me for eight, nine years. And uh, yeah, I'm just loving her more and more, man. I think it's the most beautiful thing. Let's head back inside. Hey, but the cool thing is that my emergency phone I haven't used for an emergency, luckily, but I have used it quite often for the fucking flashlight. Gotcha. Motherfucking mosquitoes. I have a thing with mosquitoes, by the way. I kind of don't want to say goodbye because you're kind of my, uh, the only connection I have right here. In this little cabin of ours. This is your captain speaking. We have arrived at our final destination, which is the Stefanovic show. Yeah.